Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 14 of the F1 2021 Williams Road to Glory. Yes, today we're here finally back with another round up from this series. Of course, if you missed out on the Russian Grand Prix last time round, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking out Russia. Yeah, without giving you guys too many spoilers for just a moment, was another banger of a race in this series. But today... We head to Singapore in what might well end up being the longest 50% race I'll have to do on F1 2021. Williams, Singapore, this is going to be a fun one. Of course, having a look though at the championship standings currently as we head into this one. Hamilton still leads the way 18 points ahead of Valtteri Bottas. There you got both Red Bulls in P2, uh, sorry, in P3 and P4. Their Mercedes 200 points clear of Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship there. Williams, we're eighth in the uh, Constructors at the moment, looking pretty safe as I'm P14 in the drivers ahead of our teammate George Russell there. Sonoda might be able to jump us by the end of the year, but, you know, if we can continue on with the strong run of form we've had in the last couple of weekends, Singapore has been a good track so far in F1 2021 for us. Let's dive in then here for qualifying. Right, here we are then, qualifying day at the Singapore Grand Prix, and I must admit, this thing does look absolutely stunning under the floodlights. I always forget just how good this William looks on F1 at 2021, but fingers crossed we can get a good lap in nice and early on in the session. There is a still a threat of rain looming around the venue for this lap, as Esteban Ocon, yeah, you've not timed that well, but he's starting right behind me. Not really sure we'll qualify particularly well around here, but again, obviously, we always seem to be able to keep the tyres in good nick and really stretch them throughout a stint as well. But the Williams, yeah, isn't the best on its rubber either. Having to run a 9 and 11 on the wings this weekend. Really just try and get the car rotated through the corners. That's normally what we run at Monaco. Of course, Singapore, a little bit of a higher speed circuit than at the Principality venue there as well. But yeah, Singapore though, obviously back in real life next year as well. Must admit, have missed this venue from the last couple of seasons. It's always been a shame to see Singapore go, but obviously completely understandable as well over the last two years. But yeah, let's just see what we can do on this first qualifying lap. Been pretty hooked up so far. Ocon certainly hasn't been rattling us too much. I'm running the final couple of corners. They're really trying to attack the curbs and get as close to the wall as you can on the exit of the penultimate corner there. Through the final turn we go. That is going to be a 37-3. Leaves us P9 at the moment as well. Let Ocon through. Quicker than Vettel and Gasly, that's a rather nice surprise. One lap. We think we may see some rain. ETA is about 15 minutes. Well, I don't think we're going to worry about that too much then, Jeff, with six minutes left on the clock. But about to go out for our second run. We'll have to decide quite early on in this one whether, obviously, well, before the end of the lap either, whether we're going to bail out or not. Otherwise, we won't be able to get a third run in. Yeah, just had a small electrical fault at the start of the session, which costs us a couple of minutes. But yeah, let's just see how far up on this time we can go and if there's any mistakes. Well, so far, it's been a pretty hooked up lap as we just nudge the wall on the entry in towards whatever corner that was. But just got to try and keep it nice and tidy through the final couple of corners and half a second up. I think we've just got to try and get this lap completed. Singapore so far has worked really nicely for us on F1 2021, and long may it continue. Round in the final corner, six tenths up now. That's a lot of curb through the final corner. Seven tenths up, though, as we get to the line, and that's ninth currently on the grid for the Singapore GP there. A couple more people have still got laps to do, though. Kimi Raikkonen in tenth. So clearly, yeah, backmarkers pace this weekend. A lot, lot closer to the rest of the field. Don't quite imagine Haas are going to be on the same level, but yeah, right behind Lando Norris. Well, there we are then, the end of qualifying for the Singapore Grand Prix, and Bottas puts it on pole less than a tenth ahead of Lewis Hamilton there. Perez getting ahead of both the Ferraris. There's one thousandth of a second between Leclerc and Max Verstappen there. Of course, the times did tumble late on in the session. We start P13, George Russell just four tenths behind in P18 there. we got uh, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Vettel and Ocon that all had a really tough time and qualifying as well there. Our points on the table today were not far away from the likes of Stroll and the Alpha Towers. Let's dive in to the Singapore Grand Prix. Against the spectacular backdrop of the Singapore skyline, 
Formula One returns once again to do battle in what tends to become something of an endurance race, with the notorious sauna-like temperatures in the cockpit making for an extremely physically challenging Grand Prix. We're here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit today, located in the heart of Singapore. The circuit consists of 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right. It's a track that's incredibly technical, so don't expect to see the drivers taking too much at full throttle. And it's an absolute pleasure to be joined once again by Anthony Davidson. Why don't we discuss McLaren? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Norris, Fernando Alonso, Stroll, Bottas, they've taken a grid penalty, and Mr. Monaco. Giovinazzi, Ocon, Charles Leclerc, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, and Vettel. Raikkonen, Russell, Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin, Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, well, wasn't expecting that then. At the end of qualifying, thanks to some grid penalties for drivers around us, we start P10 for this one alongside Valtteri Bottas. For the Singapore Grand Prix. Sometimes do you ever just look at a grid in Formula 1 and think, how on earth have you ended up there? Yeah, that is certainly me here today. In terms, though, of strategy, want to try and stretch out, perhaps, uh, the game doesn't reckon... Why doesn't the game believe that's possible? Oh, no, there we go. Uh, yeah, we want to try and do the medium soft soft. If we can here today. Game doesn't reckon it's particularly worth it. But the medium... Oh, sorry, the hard tyres I've never really found are to work all too well around here. But, like I said, this one is going to be a race of endurance here at Singapore. Luckily, no threat of rain. It's just going to be a nice cloudy evening here on the Marina Bay Street. But, yeah, let's dive in then here to the Singapore Grand Prix. Round number 14 of the year. Five red lights. And it is going to be a mighty long hold, but finally lights out and away we go. And we're starting on the medium, so everyone around us is going to get a better start there as we head down towards turn one. Oh, a little bit of a dive up the inside of Esteban Ocon there as we try and keep the nose up the inside of the car inside the top ten off the start of the Grand Prix. Bottas already trying to make moves on the Canadian Lance Stroll as we're going to squeeze Ocon down in towards turn four there. He's going to keep the nose, but we do hold on to P10 off the start of this Grand Prix there, but as we head down the Raffles Boulevard, Ocon tried to sneak it up the inside there, not allowing that one to go ahead, as Bottas, yeah, now has completed the move on Lance Stroll as well there, but a decent little start, I think holding on to grid position was always going to be critical here, obviously on these mediums, but yeah, now it's just a case of trying to settle down into a rhythm, it looks like Perez has jumped Lewis Hamilton as well off the start of the Grand Prix there, so after qualifying I thought this is Bottas's chance to take some points out of his teammate there. But Hamilton, yeah, certainly in the hot seat early on. But again, 31 laps, need I remind you, here of Singapore as well. Always the chance of a safety car around this circuit. Yeah, any anything can happen here in Marina Bay. But maybe, just maybe, we can have a look past Lance Stroll. That might be the next thing that happens. Perez almost dipping down into the sub-100 second lap time. So here as we come to the end of lap two. But I think what really plays into our hands when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Yeah, I think what really plays into our hands here at Singapore is just the fact, you know, we're generally pretty good at keeping the tyres and the temperatures down on F1 2021. You know, the lower pressures I like to run and everything like that really does help out. So obviously it does mean the AI tend to sort of overheat their fronts a little bit around here. Can really struggle with that as we might get a run on stroll now in the Grand Prix. Not quite close enough this time. But yeah, it does just mean we can sort of push a bit more, which we're used to running those low tyre pressures, so it's not like we're losing any performance that I'd normally be expecting. But yeah, really do have to massively work the fronts and wheel spin away on the rears to really get the tyres outside of their comfort zone. Already seeing Lance Stroll just in a couple of places really over pushing the tyres already in this stint. Was that Esteban Ocon trying to have a look at the inside? 
in towards turn two. They're a bit of an opportunistic lunge from the young Frenchman. I think it might have been, but now look at that. Look how early we're able to get on the power in comparison to Lance Stroll. Look at the squeeze, though, he gives us as we head down the back straightaway here, side by side with the Canadian, but we do have to put up around the outside. Team happy with that one as well. I'm into ninth now. Gap ahead is 1.8 seconds. We're leading our teammate by 5.0 seconds. Yeah, I think Stroll is definitely struggling early on here because we've already got a gap outside the DRS window to the Canadian behind us. We've got Bottas now as well trying to apply the pressure to Fernando Alonso just in front of him. Is Bottas going to be able to get a run this time round as they head down the Raffles Boulevard? He's closing in. He goes to the outside of the Alpine and this might help us. Get a bit closer to the pair of them here. Bottas hooks it up around the outside. He's got the inside for the next corner. But can't put the power down and keep the nose there. And Alonso lives to fight another day. But it's closed us up by about a second in one lap there. As that was a bit brave through the next corner. Bottas has now moved past Fernando Alonso in this Grand Prix. Can we do the same not long after here? Alonso really, really struggling as well on his tyres. I think this is the problem for the lower top 10 cars that were able to make it through. Don't have the pace but do have the qualifying wear. There's all oh, that was an accidental dive bomb at the inside of Fernando Alonso but no contact is made. And we'll take that one rather cheeky indeed on Fernando. Don't lock up and hit the outside wall. Bottas already tearing off into the distance though. Yeah, wasn't expecting to make a send there but I'm, I'm taking that. I'm pretty proud of that one. Immediately afterwards, cars into the pit lane there. Hamilton, Verstappen and Ricciardo all in. So by the time all these guys have made their stops, we might actually get a few laps led under our belt. Yellow flag. Oh, we've got yellow flags out. Oh, it's Lando so Norris, I think. Lando Norris has clearly got catastrophic issues here and he's going to have to pull to the wayside here in this race. It has not been all the week to be a Lando Norris fan. On the Matt 2 and 2 channel there, of course, lost the nail-biter decider between himself and Hamilton in Abu Dhabi. And now he's out here in Singapore as well. Heartbreak for Norris, but it means we're up to fourth now. As are we going to see the top three into the pits as we skim the wall through the final corner? Yes, it does. So we are going to inherit the lead here in Singapore. Take a picture, share it with your friends. We won't get this too often in the rest of the year, but... Down the line, it's going to be all too familiar for you guys, I hope. Your top five for today as well. Myself, Giovinazzi, Russell, Schumacher, Sonoda. Would love to see that come to the checkered flag. And that's the picture you really want to take then in the Grand Prix. We've got an opportunity to look after the car here. Giovinazzi into the pit, so it is now a Williams 1-2 here in Singapore. We have to remember these days, I tell you what. But we've got Schumacher acting as a bit of a rear gunner as well. Fingers crossed he can keep Hamilton and Perez at bay. And then us two can really try and romp away here. But pace so far, really good on these tyres. I'm going to try and get them to about lap 14, lap 15. And then we'll do 8, 9 laps on the other two sets. Well, so much for Schumacher acting as a rear gunner for us. Perez and Hamilton have immediately gone through. And Hamilton's like 4 seconds ahead of him already. What's Schumacher doing? Come on, man, help us out. George is coming in for his stop. And just when I thought George might help us out for a few laps, he's decided to pit in as well. So I think by the time we pit Hamilton, will probably be all over the back of us there, as well as Perez. Although they might be going side by side. If they are, that'll help us out, break away a bit. As Schumacher still in fourth, but Ricardo now fifth. Every lap I go over the Anderson Bridge, the engine notes of Hamilton and Perez just gets louder and louder behind us. You'll be on the soft gap. The teammate behind is 31.1 seconds. Not sure if it's worth pitting now or the end of next lap here, but yeah, these tyres are really starting to go off at this stage of the day. Nine laps, or eight laps, then nine laps, though, I think, on media, on softs each should be possible. And, of course, if we go a bit shorter on the first stint, obviously, we can always go back to hard uh, mediums even for our third stint of the Grand Prix there. But yeah, Hamilton now only a second back. Might be able to have a look for something this lap. But yeah, we are going to box Understood. in. Stopping this lap. Whoa! Hamilton! Holy moly! <laughs> that completely took me by surprise from the Mercedes there. Just went full send over the Anderson Bridge there and has taken the lead. Oh, that the Grand Prix. I was lucky there was no contact there between myself 
and a Mercedes man, but tell you what, they always used to talk about Sinner would dive bomb people and they'd be psychologically buried. I think Hamilton has done the same to me there. That completely took me by surprise. I'd love to have a heart rate monitor to see what it went up to then. That was incredible from Lewis. Anyway, into the pits we come, though. At the end of the lap, we're going to let Perez free as well as all over the curb we go. Make sure we get it slowed down into the pit lane nice and tidily. Uh, but yeah, first in though has been pretty good, if I do say so myself. Pretty happy with that. I think we should come out near the top ten still. I reckon we're going to be out around the Aston Martins with a bit of luck here. I don't really want to get stuck in the Alfa Romeo Alfa Tauri sandwich. Release, release. As I say that, I think it is going to be mighty close between myself, I'm guessing Kimmy, yeah, who leads this group. Kimmy might come out just in front. In fact, it looks like we are just going to get edged out by those guys. So back out in P15 then. Russell three seconds back. So he's taken a good five seconds out of me. Five, six seconds over the pit window as well. As we did lose a lot of time trying to stretch those tyres the extra couple of laps. But now we're going to be mighty fast the next two stints with a bit of luck. Sonoda up first. Well, immediately the question in my mind is, can we do to Sonoda what Hamilton did to me just one lap ago? Up the inside we go. In one word, yes. Yes, we can. Great manoeuvre. You made it look easy. Team happy with that one as well. Giovinazzi, next man on the old hit list. we we'll really make sure we utilise the fresh grip this rubber provides. To the outside of Giovinazzi, back in towards turn one. And can we get it slowed down? Yes, we can. Up the, uh, around the outside, I should say, of Giovinazzi there. And we should just be in the DRS range of Gasly up the road as well. Are we going to see him and Kimi have a bit of a duel down the Raffles Boulevard? As, oh, we get mighty close to the wall there. That was must have grazed it ever so slightly again. But luckily, no damage. As Gasly's got nothing top end on Kimi Raikkonen. Right, we did it to Sonoda just one lap ago. Can we do the same... To Pierre Gasly now, a very, very aggressive over the curbs. Oh, that was a bit more aggressive. Gasly tried to turn in on me, but we had committed to the move. I'm sure Gasly not a fan of that, but I'm at a, a 12th now. Oh, Kimi Raikkonen struggling on his dead set of the medium tyres here. I think that he's only going to be able to extend this stint by another couple of laps at most. So we head out of the final corner. Look at the run there. We did the same move twice on the Alpha Towers. By 3.2 seconds. And we're going to do the same move twice on the Alfa Romeos as well. Kimi, though, tried to put up a bit more of a fight. But we'll have to slot back down into P12. All over the back now of Sebastian Vettel. Didn't quite fancy another dive over the bridge. But we have got a tremendous grip on the exit there. Up the inside we go of Seb. And we're now up inside the top ten. Here in Singapore once more. This thing on P10. this fresh rubber is an absolute dream to drive so far today. Singapore, yeah, it all just seems to come together. 13 laps to go, though. It can still easily get undone. We're barely over halfway there. And I feel like I've already done a 50% race. Oh, so there we go. End of the lap. A few cars now starting to peel in for another pit stop here. Ocon, you can see, kicking out the back end as well. So I'm at a 7th place now of the race. Might just be 6th as we get ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. As well here, Hamilton and... So well, I'm not too sure. Must be one of the Ferraris that hasn't pit yet. Still out just in front of us as we're trying to get all over the back of Ocon. Down into towards turn four. A little bit of contact. It's both of us just jockeying for some space on the circuit. But look at the run we've got on the exit. Up the inside we go, Ocon! Tried to give me a big old squeeze so we'll return the favour. Tried to turn in on me through the kink. But we'll get later on the brakes. We'll take fifth place for now. And we will hopefully see him in our rearview mirror, or at least behind us, at the end of this race. There we go, last few cars into the pits as well here. Perez might be able to get a jump on Hamilton again, as he got lost a lot of time. Stuck behind Carlos Sainz over the course of that lap. They're going to be side by side as they head back down in towards turn one there. But Hamilton has held on for now. We're still all over the back of Checo here, but of course those guys now go into the end of this race. And we've still got one more pit stop to make. Tire condition is still looking good. Holy run, Ricardo! That is mega overspeed as we head back down towards Turn One, and a sobering reality here in Singapore. It's just so weird how, in such a short space of time, we can go from being absolutely rapid and OP to then just cars absolutely flying back past us again. 
don't think it's going to be long before Bottas does the same, especially with a run like that. George is in the pits. George in the pits. Out onto the back straight there. Not just going to let Bottas by, but yeah, certainly thinking of my own race. We need to get to the flag in the quickest time possible still if we want points. Valtteri Bottas up the inside. He goes. Oh, almost contact. As Bottas went wildly aggressive across the front end there. Very much a send from the Finn, who I think was a bit desperate to try and make the move work. And now we're back down to P5 of the race. But we've got 17 seconds to Alonso behind us. We're going to pit probably the end of lap 23. Based on how much time Alonso has taken out of me, we may as well just pit now in this Grand Prix. Face the pain right at the very end, but we can try and defend from these guys a bit more. Plus, of course, we'll have slightly less fuel as well for the final s stint here, as that is definitely why we need to pit now in this GP. Through the final couple of corners we come. Let's make sure the team are aware of it. We'll receive you at the end of this lap. But yeah, these tyres, when they hit the cliff, they really, really hit the cliff here. Through the final corner. Only just getting it stopped. Through the final couple of turns there. And I think this time round we should come out. Sort of around the Aston Martins. And I think it must be Max Verstappen. In this Grand Prix there. Perez still trying to hound Lewis Hamilton. For the race of victory here. But a nice clean tidy final stop. 2.6 isn't bad but isn't great either. We should still be in the points here. But it will be P10 at the moment. As there goes Sebastian Vettel. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. But yeah, and eight more laps on these tyres is going to be a tall order to the end. I think we're just going to have to try and nurse them a bit more. Try and not take as much out of them early on in the stint. But we'll see what happens in these final few laps here. But I'm actually not taking yeah, any time at a Seb in front. Two seconds. Obviously not too worried as we are P10. But yeah, just trying to nurse this rubber a bit more. But it's not taking any time out of Sebastian Vettel. Wondering whether it would have actually been worth going on the mediums for this final stint. But not going to give up yet. Five laps to go now. And it really looks like the question now very much shifts to can we keep Ocon at bay? But we need to look after the tyres. We won't be making another pit stop. Not sure what world they think we're catching the car in front at this stage of the day. But yeah, really, really struggling now. For whatever reason, in the final few laps here, tyre wear's not too bad. Temperatures are about where they should be as well. Just don't quite have the grip or the confidence at the moment. So we keep needing to use the battery down the Raffles Boulevard here to make sure we just keep Ocon at arm's length. Team, yeah, saying tyre condition is still looking good. But yeah, we just got to conserve the battery around the rest of the lap and use it all there. Park the bus and deploy down the straights. We're really starting to cause a train now with three and a half to go here. We've got Ocon Gasly and I think Charles Leclerc, I want to say, just behind us. So we've got the two Frenchmen. I oh, know it is Carlos Sainz, sorry, so the two Frenchmen. And the Spaniard there is there goes Ocon up the inside. Can we hold on on the exit of the corner here? Lost the position. Try to keep focus. Ocon goes defensive, but we stick the nose back up the inside. I'm not having that without a fight and we'll return the favour there. Dive bomb back. On Esteban Ocon, and yeah, just three to go here. Can we hang on? Yeah, Ocon, you can try that once, mate, but you're not allowing to do it twice there. Another big send from Esteban Ocon. As has he picked up some front wing damage from that? There definitely seems to be a small chunk taken out of the wing. As look at that, Gasly makes it three wide down the end of the back straight to here. The AI getting desperate. Absolutely desperate for something with just over two to go here. And I am clinging on by an absolute thread at the moment. Nothing going to happen there for Pierre Gasly. But now we've got such a huge train of cars behind us. There. I think, yeah, look at that Raikkonen. And I want to say Yuki Sonoda as well. Now in this group as the tyre warning light has come on with two to go. We've got four laps of fuel. That I'm not so worried about. But we're just nursing this rubber at the moment trying to hang on. For everything we've got there. Gasly to the outside. Back down towards turn one. And again we'll have to squeeze him out there. Two to go. This will be the defensive drive of the year. From myself. And we can somehow come up clutch. Well about to start the final lap then. Here from the Singapore Grand Prix. And somehow we are still in 10th place at the moment. There, Gasly tried to send it through the final corner. Definitely not allowing anything to happen there but we've got a train of five maybe six cars behind us all just trying to jockey and work out a way through but none of them so far 
have found a way to make it stick there. Ocon now and Gasly going side by side back down through the first couple of turns. That can really help us out and buy us just that little bit of extra time we need on the final lap here. And as we head out onto the Raffles Boulevard for the 31st and final time, completely drain the battery as we head down this straight. We're there. Force Gasly to the outside if he wants to try and make anything work. Nothing happening there, though, for Pierre. Lewis Hamilton is going to come through to take victory here in Singapore and further extend his championship lead over his teammate Valtteri Bottas. But I can't lie at this moment in time, I absolutely do not care. Gasly gets another run though as we head down into what used to be the Singapore Sling. Not brave enough to go for a full set there as we'll just tone back down the pace and reel it back in. Look at the understeer though. We have picked up a little bit of front wing damage there as Gasly has gone clean into the back of me over the Anderson Bridge there. Gasly's out. What's happened to Gasly? So riding on board then with Pierre Drama on the final lap of this Grand Prix. You can see us nudge the wall and he just tried to send it a bit too much. Ocon gets caught out there as Gasly loses his wheel as the others just have to sneak by. It's yet more drama though on the final lap here in Singapore. We've obviously got the front wing damage that we're trying to nurse to the chequered flag as well there. Look at that Sainz now trying to just go for a send as well. Everyone battling so hard. And remember, this is just for one point here in Singapore. Sainz to the outside. You don't want to be there, mate. Nothing we've got left in the front ends. Carlos Sainz completely in the wrong place at the wrong time there. And apologies to him, but there was never going to be able to make a move work. One more corner to go, though. Kimi Raikkonen around the outside. No, we're not having that. In the final corner, he comes together with Sonoda, and we hold on for P10. Right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today, everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Yuki Tsunoda gets my vote today. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, Alpine move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Tell you what, 54 minutes of racing here from Singapore, and I am absolutely shattered at the end of that one. But it is Lewis Hamilton who wins here in Marina Bay ahead of Sergio Perez and Daniel Ricciardo there. Bottas a decent recovery to fourth. Alonso, one of his best races of the year in P5 ahead of Leclerc, Sainz, and then the two Aston Martins there. But 10th to 10th, yeah, very much doesn't show the full picture from that Grand Prix. Arguably, I think the most chaotic final lap I think we've had on F1 2021. It must be either this or I think late on in season one of my team at Paul Ricard. There was drama there as well. But we do hold on for one solidary point here in Singapore. They're ahead of Raikkonen and Sonoda there. Ocon, of course, getting caught out by Gasly. Carlos Sainz finishing down in P17 as well. There were Gasly and Mazepin both a lap down with Lando Norris, the only man not to technically make it to the chequered flag there. Championship-wise, though, Alonso, yeah, leapfrogs Vettel and Ocon with that good result there. Hamilton now of race wins ahead of Valtteri Bottas as well with just six races to go of the year there. Any other movers further down the order? Doesn't seem like there was any movement 
as well down the rest of the field there. But 20 points on the board. Rather happy uh, with that one. Constructors-wise, though, Alpine with that mega result for Alonso. Pretty much, yeah, out of reaching distance now for us. Unless we have a worldly of a race somehow late on in the year, though. Mercedes further extending their lead at the top. The only real battle to watch out for, yeah, are Alpine and Alpha Tauri there. As, yeah, Os Alonso's good result moves them back up into sixth place as well there but what a race if you guys have enjoyed do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed and yeah we'll be back very very soon we're around 15 of the year we head to suzuka that's going to be difficult in the williams but we'll see what we can muster up three points finishes in a row not optimistic we'll make it four but you don't know if you don't try a massive thank you for the continued support from all our channel members if you want to be featured in these end clips make sure you click the join button down below but yeah once again a massive thank you to the travesty patrick chuan david ben aiden f stathios kato sean johnny mcblam and mighty spork for becoming channel members their support is really really appreciated